Hey everyone, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to test the RCF ND850 compression driver. And I'm also going to remove the rear cover off of the compression driver and retest everything to see the effect of uh, the removal of the rear cover and running it open back. So let's get right to it. Um, just to review some of the specs on this driver, um, it's a three inch pure titanium diaphragm and it's available in either a two inch or a 1.4 inch throat. So just if you're not aware, the adapter here is removable and then it just reveals the 1.4 inch throat. So that's pretty common with a lot of modern compression drivers, simply allowing you to do either 2 inch or 1.4 inch. So for this test, we're testing it on uh, the ES290 by radial, uh, horn number 1670, which is a 300 hertz cutoff, 60, uh, 66 centimeters wide. And so this is going to uh, provide the best ability to kind of see the driver's performance since the horn is low coloration. Uh, just to highlight that, you can see here, this is the off axis for the ES290. Um, this is the response of an earlier test that I had done with the AXI 2050. And just kind of highlights how consistent the off axis is with the on axis, so you can see there. So uh, this just indicates that the horn is in fact a low coloration design uh, for home hi-fi listening. And so uh, mounted to this with the two inch adapter, um, we'll start out by looking at the impedance curve on the uh, RCF here. So you can just skip down here. You can see this is the impedance curve. Uh, the FS is 500 Hertz. And then we can see that it's very well behaved through its pass band with very low uh, inductive rise. So inductive rise would be uh, located here where we would see an upward trend. So the compression driver features copper shorting rings in the magnetic gap. And so you can see it here, I've removed the diaphragm. You can see the three, sit, three slit phase plug here uh, with the centered uh, connections there. So with the diaphragm in place, you can see it here. So I'll go back to the uh, published data there from RCF and you can see here it says it has a titanium diaphragm copper uh, inductance ring for extended response and then it says a vented damped low distortion suspension system and so if you look here under the uh, suspension material it's using a polyester surround on this driver so here you can see the polyester surround that's perforated with holes and so uh, if I had to speculate this is uh, to prevent resonances that may occur acoustical resonances that would occur underneath the surround and then you can see here there's quite a bit of, of overlap onto the titanium diaphragm and um, so that's one of the features of the driver where it says um, it's a low distortion suspension system okay so uh, really nice design uh, with some nice features there so this is a three inch compression driver titanium and so with this size format you're going to get some breakup in the upper treble and so we can see here that we have a mild breakup based on the impedance sweep there starting at 8 kilohertz and then things get worse as we move up so looking at the frequency response here we can see uh, that things are very linear through its pass band there's no kind of high q peaks that would indicate some sort of a resonance so it's very linear and then we get into the breakup region of the driver so so far uh, the driver is looking really really good um, so looking at the burst decay Burst decay is extremely clean as well as the spectral decay. Uh, we don't see any anomalies whatsoever until we get into the breakup of the driver. So looking at distortion, I tested harmonic at 85 and 95 dB. And so we can see here that second harmonic is at 65 dB. Uh, if we move up into the 95 test signal, uh, we can see that the H2 is at minus 55. And then we're really low on this third and fourth harmonic. So IMD, at the 85 dB test signal, we can see extremely low IMD in the lower mid-range at, at, at 500 hertz, we're at minus 78 dB. Um, the IMD does shelf up at around one kilohertz. We can see it's come up about three or four dB, rising five dB by the time we're at about five kilohertz. So at five kilohertz, we're at minus 65 dB for the, for the intermodulation distortion. 
As we move, as we increase the test signal to 95 dB, we can see that trend continue. At, a, at um, 5 kilohertz, we're at minus 60 dB. So minus 60 dB is our target for sound quality. That's our in-house uh, target for sound quality. Anything beyond that is just kind of icing on the cake, so to speak. So we're going to get uh, excellent sound quality from this compression driver. So the next uh, leg of the testing is to remove the rear cover and run it open back and then to repeat the testing just to see uh, if there's any change at all in any of the performance. So looking at the impedance sweep with the rear cover removed, we can see that the FS drops from 500 hertz down to 300 hertz. And then the uh, impedance peak uh, is basically, or the impedance sweep, sorry, is basically unchanged with the exception of this uh, peak here that we see at 400 hertz. And so what I'm going to do, I'm going to open up a, a second tab uh, here just to do a direct side by side of the uh, of the uh, test with the cover on and then with the cover off. So, so we can see here, this is the impedance or the the, uh, the impedance with the cover on and then this is with the cover off and so um, I suspect that uh, you can still see the uh, peak here at 400 Hertz and so I believe that this peak exists um, we're simply moving the main one down to the 300 Hertz so so comparing the two responses on the left we have the, the open back and then the cover in place so the frequency response is basically the same. There's very little difference in the overall frequency response. Same thing with the burst decay. We're not seeing anything different with the burst decay. You could say that perhaps uh, it's a little cleaner uh, if we look at this area here at around 10K, but we're not even gonna be using this driver in that region, so it's, so it's kind of moot. Okay, so uh, a CSD plot, no change there. So, Looking at harmonic distortion, um, we can see that things are actually improving. Um, actually, I'm going to skip right to the um, intermodulation distortion because that's the real story here. So now I mentioned earlier with the cover in place, we had a, a rise in the IMD starting at one kilohertz. We can see it here and then it kind of trends upwards. So with the cover removed, we can see that um, that shelf completely eliminated and what we're left with is a, what we're left with is about a 5 DB improvement so we're at minus 78 across the spectrum where previously we had minus 78 only up to about 1 kilohertz so if we increase the test SPL to 95 DB we can see that the trend continues again where we have very low distortion so at 5 kilohertz we're at minus 65 where with the cover in place, we're at minus 60. So the removal of the cover uh, improves distortion by about 5 dB. And so I should note as well that with uh, some of my testing that I've done recently, if you increase the test SPL beyond 95 dB, so increasing it to 105 or above, and this would be for pro audio sound reinforcement applications that's where i found that the cover was beneficial in controlling the diaphragm and so for home applications uh, the removal of the rear cover actually uh, sees an improvement now if if you're concerned about the diaphragm being exposed in that way then what i have been doing recently is actually 3d printing rear covers that just protect the driver and uh, creating kind of a much larger volume at the back and then venting it out and um, and the, the driver does respond well to dampening material in the chamber in the rear rear cover uh, but you'd want to make sure that the material itself isn't touching the diaphragm so I know in previous videos maybe uh, two years ago I had experimented with putting the 30 ppi open open cell foam touching on the the peak of the dome there and that does serve to damp out the breakup that you would see in the driver but it doesn't help with the mid-range frequencies and when i did this test recently i found that there was some imd increase in very uh, specific parts of the frequency bandwidth when you had the, the foam touching the diaphragm and so if uh I think just as a general rule, uh, it's good to have nothing touching the diaphragm. So the next step uh, that I 
did was implement this as a three-way setup. And so I decided to use the, the, the Kier CT440 bullet style tweeter that I featured a few months ago. And so I used a third order high pass filter at eight kilohertz and then um, a low and high pass filter on the RCF. And so just to, uh, I'm just gonna go to my solid work screen here just to show you uh, the test setup. So it was the 1798 base cabinet with the RCF ND850 and then not shown is the bullet tweeter that sits on top, but basically it sits on top and and then it's perfectly uh, physically time aligned with the mid-range driver. And also I'll mention too that the mid-range is perfectly time aligned with the, the woofer uh, at a 30 centimeter depth in, in from the front of the speaker. So, um, so when you do that, uh, what you end up with is this frequency response here. So we have good symmetry in the crossover slopes and then uh, extension out to 20 kilohertz um, using that bullet style tweeter. So, just sorry here, I'm just gonna. So I just decided to confirm that we have good step response. And so you can see here uh, the step response of the system. Uh, and this would be the mid frequency, high frequency together. And so you can see there that we have really good uh, time alignment and good step response. So, so uh, what I wanted to do is do a little sound clip. And so to avoid the, um, the infringement with YouTube, I did a YouTube, uh, not YouTube, but a Google Drive link uh, to a video where I uh, did a video recording of some music playing with this setup so you have an opportunity to hear the sound character in my room uh, and I was using my iPhone um, it's a, a later version of the iPhone and so it does give you an idea of the sound quality and sound staging in my uh, main level listening room which doesn't have any acoustical treatment um, that that's the nice thing too about this is the 1798 has a has a great ability kind of to con create a wide coverage um, but that's also controlled so okay so another thing I wanted to show you was the uh, just the driver cost and so currently available from TLHP in France regular is 402 euro and then they do have it on sale so it's an excellent compression driver reasonable price uh, it doesn't show any kind of uh, performance issues within its passband as a mid-range driver and so uh, just an excellent overall driver so uh, there you have it uh, take care and have a great day